Hello everyone and welcome back to Perfect English with me, Alex. I hope you're all okay. I have a new video for you this week all about English slang. I have 10 great examples of English slang to get stuck into in this video. I have chosen these examples of slang because they are spoken everywhere in England. No matter where you are or who you are talking to, you will be able to use these words and be understood. So I think you will benefit from using these words a lot. Make sure you add them to your vocabulary. Please make sure to smash the like button on the video and subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos each week. And please leave a comment with any suggestions you may have for future videos and any questions you have about this video. But here it is, 10 English slang words. Number one, barnet. Someone's hair or hairstyle. We use this word quite a lot. We can use it in a positive way Oh, I love your new barnet, or a negative way. <sighs> Come on, sort that, sort that barnet out. It's a mess. Sort your barnet out. It is hideous. And number two, mate. Mate means friend. You may have heard this word a lot because it's very, very popular in England. Everybody describes everybody as their mate. So. We can use this in a few different ways. We might just say, oh, I was out with a mate last night. I was out with a friend last night. Or, oh, I'm just out with my mates at the moment. So in that instance, it is a substitute for friend. We are replacing friend with mate. However, we can also use mate just to put on the end of a sentence when we are talking to one of our friends. So, what are you doing today, mate? Oh, are you coming out, mate? So it can be used in both ways, as a substitute for friend or just casually when talking to a friend at the end of a sentence. Number three, banter. This is mocking, joking or having a laugh with a friend. Used a lot among young people, it means it's when we are having a laugh at somebody else's expense. Sometimes if we've said something that is probably a bit too rude and we feel bad, we try and make our friends feel better by saying, don't worry, it's only banter, it's just banter, it's just a joke between friends, just a laugh between friends. Number four, cheeky. This is doing, drinking or eating something that we probably shouldn't. So, do you want to go for a cheeky pint at lunch? You know you probably shouldn't go for a pint at lunch, but you want to do it anyway. Shall we go for a cheeky curry tonight? I love curry. Cheeky curry? So it's something, it's an invitation to do something that you probably shouldn't do, but let's face it, we all really want to do those things. Number five, gagging. This means I really want to do something. I'm gagging to do something. Used quite frequently among English speakers. Oh, I've had such a long week. I'm gagging for a beer. I'm gagging for a beer. Please can we go for a cheeky beer? Oh, I'm gagging to try that new restaurant in town. It looks so good. I'm gagging to go. Six, bum. This is the English word for bottom or ass if you're American. Very strange word but used throughout England. I've spoken to so many people from different countries and whenever I've said this word, they look at me just like, what is that? What is that? Very, very specific British word. It's not a rude word or an offensive word. It's just what we physically call a bottom. We can say it to our grandma. We can say it to children. It's not offensive. You can say it to whoever you want to say it to. It's just what we call the body part. So you might say something like, oh, I've been riding my bike all day. My bum is absolutely killing me. It's hurting so much. Number seven, cuppa. You know as Brits, we love drinking tea. We can't get enough tea. And cuppa means cup of tea. So as time has gone on and we've got lazier and lazier, we have just pressed these three words together. Cup of tea becomes cup of tea. Then cup of tea, cuppa. It just means cup of tea. But you might say, I'm gagging for a cuppa, mum. Can you put the kettle on? Oh, I'm gagging for a cuppa. Ooh, does anyone want a cuppa? Number eight, sick. You may know this as a negative word, like, oh, I'm sick, I'm sick. But 
We also use the word sick for something that is good. So, that car is sick. Have you seen that car? It's sick. We use this word a lot. So, very, very important that you pay attention to the context in which this word is being said. I feel sick, but that car is sick. That goal was sick. Number nine, minted. This means rich or wealthy when we're talking about money. So whenever we use the word rich or wealthy, we can substitute it for minted. He has three cars, he must be minted. That football player earns so much money, he is minted. Number nine, minted. Number 10, gobby. This comes from the English slang word for mouth, gob. Shut your gob. Gobby is used to describe someone who just talks and talks and talks. They won't stop talking. It can also be used for somebody who is very loud. Normally, those two things go together. So, someone who is very, very loud or talks a lot, we can say it's Gobby. Oh, she has not shut up. She has not stopped talking. She is so gobby. Or the most annoying when you're on a plane and there is someone with a really loud voice who talks all the time. Oh, he is so gobby. I wish he would shut up. He is so gobby. So there you have it. 10 English slang words to help you understand a bit more about English culture and build your vocabulary. With these words, you will be able to speak even more like a native speaker, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel, and please leave some comments on the video. I would appreciate suggestions for future videos or just feedback on this one. That would be great. Thank you so much, guys. So thank you so much for watching. That's the end of my third video. I will see you all next week.